Hi, and welcome everyone. I'm John Spear, founder and VP of quality and regulatory at Greenlight Guru. How do you make sure all of the elements of your quality management system are in place to support and enable a successful product launch? That's exactly what the fourth phase of our SMART methodology will help you do. This episode will cover the release phase, where you will learn the specific processes that need to be implemented to prepare your QMS for a successful product launch. I'll be sharing tips to help you avoid delays to market. I'll also offer actionable best practices you can follow to ensure the preparedness of your QMS during the manufacturing and market release. In the previous video, we went over the approve phase on how to position and optimize your QMS to approve the transfer of your medical device into manufacturing. If you made it to the release phase, you should be familiar with the first three phases of our SMART methodology for building a world-class medical device QMS. But if you haven't watched those episodes, go do that now and make sure you are subscribed to the Greenlight Guru YouTube channel so you never miss a new episode. You should have the following quality processes in place by the release phase. Process validation, software validation, calibration, preventive maintenance, handling and storage, distribution and installation, servicing, complaint handling, adverse event reporting and medical device reporting, corrections and removal, customer feedback, analysis of data, internal auditing, and a quality manual. At this stage, your design history file, or commonly abbreviated as DHF, is complete and all design controls have been addressed and documented. Your completed DHF should reflect compliance with design controls mandate and your design plan. Your product design will also be completely transferred to manufacturing by this phase. Product risk should have been vetted and reduced to acceptable levels. During this stage, you should identify any potential harms associated with hazardous situations and persons affected. A risk management report should be documented and approved. The risk management file should be ready for production and post-production stages of product realization. Here are some common myths about the release phase. Myth number one, once a DHF is completed and transferred to manufacturing, there's no need to keep it current and up to date. Folks, it couldn't be anything further from the truth. The reality is a best practice during the release phase is to ensure your design controls and DHF are maintained as living throughout the entire product life cycle. This means keeping it updated beyond the development phase as well. Your DHF should always be an accurate representation of the product you're delivering. An outdated DHF could result in 43 observations or warning letter if it's discovered during an inspection. FDA requires all changes to be assessed from a design control perspective. You must verify and validate any changes before implementing them into production. Design control records must support that. Otherwise, it will end up very fragmented. You should also ensure that your risk management file is maintained and living. A best practice is to keep the contents of the product risk management file in a single location for ease of access and use. This is very difficult to manage and maintain using a paper-based approach. You can search far and wide for a QMS solution that is compliant with ISO 14971, but you'll find there's only one, Greenlight Guru. That's part of the reason we built it. A risk management file contains evidence of your risk management plan, risk analysis, risk evaluation, risk controls, your evaluation of overall risk acceptability, a risk management report, and production and post-production risk activities. This asset ensures that production and post-production events are factored in and properly assessed according to the defined risk management practices in place at your company. Unfortunately, very few medical device companies actually do this well, but follow these recommendations and this can be one area in which your world-class QMS stands out from competitors. Now that you understand how to build a QMS during your go-to-market stage, you're ready for the next step of releasing your medical device into the marketplace. All of which means we're ready to go over the final stage of the five-phase SMART methodology, the track phase. See you in episode six as we will review the most effective ways to track and measure your QMS and products after successfully entering the market.